Layer One X is based in Australia, but a global company working with the blockchain. And with me is Matthew Rudolph, uh, the COO, and also Mike Stewart, the Chief Strategy Officer, to explain Layer One X and what the company is. So let's start there. Lay the groundwork. Do you want yeah. to start, Matthew? Well, what thank the company you for does? having us. Thank you for having us. Layer One X is a, uh, a Layer One blockchain. Basically, what that means is. We're a base layer where other applications can build upon. Okay. So we're similar to uh, Ethereum as a layer one, for example. Mm -hmm. But what we're bringing to the market are unique features which really enable the, the progression of mass adoption for blockchain. Some things that have never existed in the market before and, and, and many companies have tried to, uh, tried to crack the code um, but have failed. But now what we bring to the market, the solution to that, we've actually created something that uh, has never been done before and we're really excited to present it. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about what that special thing is. Mike, do you want to chime in? What have, has, have you done so that's not been done before? What we've been able to develop, okay, is that uh, interoperability between blockchains. And, the, and one of the problems is that blockchain has today is that they're, they're effectively siloed. Okay. So whether you talk about Ethereum or you talk about Solana or uh, uh, any of the other chains out there, they're siloed. So projects that are built on them can't interact, they can't exchange assets between uh, each of their chains. What we bring to the table is native chain-to-chain -chain connectivity, enabling people to transfer assets uh, of any type, whether it's uh, crypto or whether it's an uh, NFT, between those chains. And uh, it, it enables us to, uh, um, to provide a capability the market has never seen before. We're, we're actually not seeking to, uh, to compete, we're seeking to unite blockchain. Yeah. Is that one of the things you think that is kind of holding a mass adoption back is that you can't, there's no interoperability between the chains? Yeah, let me give you an example. So imagine if you had a Gmail account and you had a Outlook account and you couldn't, you could send emails within your Gmail account, but you couldn't send it to Outlook. Mm -hmm. um, imagine the inefficiency in communication and how email would not have just spread everywhere. So what we're doing is by creating those, those kind of roadways, those pathways, those connectivity is we're now bringing use cases and applications, communities, users, everyone together so they can collaborate and, and innovate together. And, and then when a user comes on, whether they're using blockchain consciously or subconsciously, they have access to all those applications without any barriers. Yeah, interesting. That really is a step forward in the we, industry. So it is. Um, let's talk about some of your projects that you have going So we've on. got, uh, at the moment, leading up to our launch in August, uh, we've got three main uh, areas of focus. The first one is around decentralized finance, uh, being able to provide uh, users with access to uh, uh, to uh, over 80% of the liquidity, the total value locked in crypto today. Uh, across all the chains that we're connected to. And Matthew will go through those in a, in a minute with you. Um, but uh, the, the fir that's the first project. The second one uh, is what we call HealthLink. Now that's a, uh, a protocol that'll enable the exchange of data between enterprise medical records. Uh, and we're currently building that out in Singapore uh, for, uh, for release uh, um, in our, uh, on our launch. We've also got a, a third area of focus is in the game industry. And we've had some fantastic conversations and we're really moving forward with a number of those uh, uh, gaming projects around the world. And when you consider the, the number of people out there gaming uh, and the potential of using Web3 uh, in the gaming industry, it's just an absolute, excuse my pun, but a game changer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Amazing. those are some applications, because I find that when I talk to people about blockchain, they're like, yeah. How does it affect me? So explain like how blockchain can change people's lives in the future. That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. Layer One X looks at uh, blockchain in, in a few different ways. Um, there's, there's a few barriers that I think that exist in terms of for people adopting blockchain. One is the complexity of, of blockchain. You talk to people and they say, well, what is it? What does it do? Uh, another one is the potential perceived risk of blockchain. You know, you hear all these stories out there, especially with cryptocurrency. Right, right, FTX and all that. Exactly, right. exactly. So if Layer 1X can um, help to uh, remove those barriers, um, and I'll give you an example. The connectivity between chains at the moment, you can go across these chains, but you use something what is called a bridge. It's very very risky. Two billion dollars worth of uh, worth of value was hacked from bridges in 2022. So what we're doing, we're, how we're starting off, is we're taking that risk out of there. So now users can interact cross chain without that risk. Uh, when we're looking at user experience, what we do is uh, with our connectivity and I might geek out a little bit here, but you can transfer assets um, between certain chains. And what we do is now we create the ability to transfer assets between any chain, but we also add the ability to transfer logic between chain. Uh, it, it means that if you're on one chain and I'm on another chain and we're an application, we can now talk to each other before any assets are deployed. It means that um, when you deploy those assets or exchange that value, it's a lot uh, more efficient 
efficient in its timing, the capital efficiency, but also with logic a lot for the user in terms of lowering the complexity, layer one X, it means that a lot of these things can happen under the hood in the background. So the user doesn't even know it's happening, but it then adds benefit to them. So for example, a financial application, uh, you can have that uh, capital efficiency working in the background and the user doesn't even know what's going on. All they're doing is reaping the benefits yes. of that. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of what we see now with apps and things like that. We yeah, don't have yeah. any idea how they work exactly. or building and, and an app. And why should you care, right? Right. You just yeah. want to make sure it works. Exactly. Right? exactly. It's, it orders your car or whatever it is that you're using the app for. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned an application in health, too, with the doctor's office. Indeed. How would that yeah. work? Well, effectively, um, that's uh, one of the future states that we're building towards. But initially, it's, it's about exchanging information between, say, a hospital across to a doctor's surgery, across to a specialist, et cetera. Um, but what we're looking to introduce is that capability where you can actually walk into a doctor's surgery, scan the doctor's ID card with your phone and approve him access to your medical records. Um, and then when you leave that surgery, that, uh, that access is revoked. And you can also pass it on to a specialist or any other um, uh, provider to yeah. uh, give them access for a, for a defined period. You start taking control of yeah. your own personal data. Mm -hmm. um, another application of it is uh, if you look in the gaming industry about um, you know, people out there, they're, they're buying and selling um, skins or NFTs for, uh, for their, uh, you know, their, their player skins or their weapons or uh, etc. They, they've then got the ability to put those onto multiple marketplaces at a time to, to sell them while still playing it at the same time. And when one of, one of those, uh, when, when the NFT is sold, it imme immediately and automatically burns the others and okay. provide and pass that asset on to the yeah. purchaser. Well, one of the so, most interesting things about the technology is controlling your own data. Yes. Which we don't That's have really, at all yeah. right now. Yeah. And I think when you're going back to that, the question you asked previously is what the, can blockchain bring to, to the everyday person? Mm -hmm. It really can bring the, the ability to have con, more control and autonomy over your own assets. And when I say assets, I mean your identity, yes. your personal mm -hmm. data, your data. It's my Kiwi accent. Yeah. Um, uh, it's uh, data. Yeah. <laughs> it's your money. It's your your real estate. It's it's all these things that can be tokenized and digitized. Down, and what we what we're doing at Layer One X, we're bringing that into your control. And by doing that, it just gives you a lot more of autonomy over how it's used. You know, in terms of data protection, it can add to that. We, we hear about these, these data hacks all the time. Blockchain can bring an extra level of security so you can feel safe when sharing information. Or uh, feel safe that you don't have to share information because you have control over that data. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and you can make money off your data too. Absolutely. Now, Facebook and everybody makes money off of our Absolutely. data. So. 100%. <laughs> and why should you not? That's your asset. That's yeah. your personal assets. So if anyone's going to make money out of it, you should make money yeah. out of it. So finally, um, just what needs to happen before we see blockchain mass adoption? Do you want to start on Mike and then we can wrap up with you? So what needs to happen is we need to start introducing the ability for, for uh, people on the street everyday users to be able to, to use um, uh, their, uh, their wallet to be able to pay for anything from a cup of coffee, to, to give access to a doctor, to, um, uh, to, to provide uh, you know, uh, things like um, access to, to uh, games. Um, there's the, the, the use cases that we have are just so broad, um, but for our launch, we're focusing on those three main areas I mentioned before, which is the, uh, the decentralized exchange, uh, the health link protocol, uh, and gaming. Yeah. Um, so what needs to happen is that, is that we really need to get uh, the name out there of, of uh, Layer 1X mm -hmm. so that we can uh, start educating people about what blockchain should be, yeah. what it was meant to be in the first place. Right, because the applications, the as you mentioned, are, I mean, there's tons of them. We're, so. we're, we're talking to mining companies about uh, being able to uh, track assets from mining to purification sure. through Food to incorporation and, into batteries mm -hmm. through the end life of, the, of a motor vehicle. Um, you know, we're, we're talking to, uh, to healthcare companies about um, tokenizing uh, medical data, your personal assets that you can then control. Yeah. Uh, the, the application is just so broad. Yeah, it's about every industry. So absolutely, I look, I think I think from from Layer One X's perspective, certain things that, uh, and I've talked about, you know, the the reducing the complexity, um, and and reducing the risk in terms of blockchain. But I also think taking it further, where blockchain can impact your life subconsciously. So you don't need to really change anything that you're doing, but blockchain is in the background, adding value in a way, whether it be um, helping you to transact faster, cheaper, or giving you the ownership over your, over your data. And there is one particular thing that we'll be announcing in the coming weeks, and, and I urge people to, to follow us on our Discord and our Twitter, which will, uh, will be a game changer. So uh, please follow us there and you'll learn all about that. Okay, mm -hmm. definitely we'll do that. Absolutely. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.